Hi everybody, welcome back to The Bindery. Thanks for joining me today. I'm starting on a new project, something a little different I haven't tried before. We're going to be making a movie prop replica. Now, many of you may have seen other prop replica videos uh, from science fiction and fantasy with swords and armor and blasters. We're going to be doing something a little bit more apropos for what I do. Uh, many of you may have seen the film and enjoyed it. Uh, maybe your favorite. And so what we're going to be doing is making the titular notebook from the film The Notebook. The journal in the film had relatively little screen time, but luckily an actual prop from the film was sold in auction and there are high quality photos of it online. So let's take a look at those. Here we have some detailed photos of the actual prop from the film. It looks fairly straightforward. Uh, it looks to be a case bound book. It's square backed. The covering is blue cloth, and it has these nice leather corners applied over top of the cloth. The corners are rounded, and it looks like the leather is pleated on the inside. The most interesting feature are these blue tooled lines, so I'll have to figure out how I'm going to make those. It has a white ribbon bookmark. The dimensions are listed as 24 centimeters high, 15 centimeters wide, and 2 centimeters thick. The actual film prop has the journal entries written on the inside. I'm not going to try to replicate those. I'll just make a blank book that would be suitable for someone else to write in. So using those photos as reference material, let's make a list of the features we want the book to have. So the first thing I want to do is to make up the text block for the book. We know the dimensions of the finished book from the description on the auction listing as being 24 centimeters high and 15 centimeters wide. So I want to at least double that because I'm going to be folding the paper twice in order to make each signature. I'm going to begin by cutting down this paper pad. I'm going to use most of the paper that's here. And I want to add a little bit extra. So the height is 24 centimeters. I'm going to add an extra centimeter and double that. So I'm going to make it 50. I'm just going to cut this down by hand. It's too large to fit in my paper cutter. I'm not using a lot of pressure. Just let the blade do its work multiple passes and then that comes free. Now the width of the paper here is more than enough. I only need about 30 or 32 centimeters. These cuts don't need to be super precise because the book block will get trimmed after it's sewn. Now back at the bench I'm going to start folding up some signatures. So we want each signature to have six leaves. But I'm going to be folding this twice, so I'm only going to need three pieces of paper per signature. I'm going to fold it first against the grain. And before I make the next fold, I'm just going to take a sharp blade and I'm going to slit along that folded edge. And that frees the paper from binding at the inside corner. I'll cut to show you what it looks like if you don't do that. So that's one signature, six leaves. And you multiply that by four to get the total number of pages there. So 24 pages 
in that one. And I'll just continue along, fold those up until I have 10 complete. So in order to compress these signatures and convince them that they really do want to be a book, I'm going to enlist the help of my friend Mr. Ritchie here. I'll just put these between some pressing boards. Center those right underneath the press screw and then give them a good tight squeeze. So while Mr. Ritchie is busy putting the squeeze on those, I'm going to go ahead and start working on the covers. Because we know the final finished dimensions of the notebook, I can build these first. Normally I would make the covers after the text block is complete, but because I want to reproduce the book from the film as closely as I can. I'm going to just cut these to size now. I'm just going to check the grain direction of my book board. This is about a two millimeter board and the grain direction is running this way. So our finished dimensions are 15 centimeters wide and 24 centimeters high and this board is just over 50 centimeters so I'll be able to cut one strip 15 centimeters wide here and get both the front and back cover from it. And then for this I'm using a slightly heavier blade. Again I'm not trying to cut through this all at once, just multiple light passes. Again, our height is 24 centimeters. Now what I need to do is to round off the corners of the boards. And in order to do that to the correct size and scale, I took one of the photos and I took it into Photoshop and I manipulated it so that I eliminated the perspective and we've got a square on photo and I printed it up to the correct scale. So this is the actual size of the book. This is going to be a very handy template for me to work off of as I go through the process of making the book. So the radius of this corner, it just happens to be almost exactly the same as the radius on this little corner rounder tool that I have. And so just on a piece of scrap card, I'm going to punch that out and we can see that it's a really close match. So I'll use the card to transfer that profile onto the corner of each board. Back here at the bench, I'm just going to use a sharp chisel to cut these profiles by pressing the chisel straight down at an oblique angle I can just work my way around the radius So our pages have now had a good long time in the press. So it's time to move on to marking them up for piercing and sewing. They come out nice and flat. We 
you can see that we've got an ample amount of paper to trim off. I probably could have gone a little bit less generous, but I'd rather have too much than not enough. So I'm going to set these up in my finishing press here in order to hold everything steady. And I'm just going to raise this up on a couple of bricks. So I've got quite a bit of extra space here, so I want to make sure that I mark this up inside the dimensions of the finished book. I can take a centimeter off of each end to estimate how much is going to be trimmed. And I'm going to measure in 12 millimeters from there for the kettle stitches. And then I'm going to sew this on two linen tapes. So I'll just measure in from the outside e equally. I'm going to say five and a half centimeters. I'm going to just use the tape itself to mark the distance for my sewing holes. And I'll mark everything off with a square. A diagonal line will help me keep everything aligned. And that'll be the head of the book, which is the top. And then with a bit of scrap card, I'm going to make a marking guide. Mark that as the head. And that will tell me where I need to mark my punching holes. My preferred method for punching the holes for the sewing is to use a piercing cradle like this and sharp awl. This is a wooden one that I'd made myself. But you can just as easily make your own using bookboard or uh, other heavy cardstock. This is one that I made from an old book cover, and I have another video that shows you how to make that for yourself. I'm going to use my wooden one for today. So it's time to move on to the sewing of the book. For this I'm going to be using linen thread. This is a 35-3 gauge thread. It's fairly light because this is going to be a square backed book without any rounding to manage the swell. I want to keep that swell to a minimum so a thin thread will help with that. I'll be using a bit of beeswax just to coat the thread make it a little bit easier to pull through the sewing holes. So I'm going to sew this freehand on two tapes. I'll just cut a generous length here. You don't necessarily need a sewing frame when sewing a book like this. A sewing frame is handy if you want to have tension on the tapes. A sewing frame can also be handy if you're going to sew multiple books on the same tape setup. And then you can do them one on top of the other and not have to worry about setting it up over and over again. I'm going to work on one of my pressing boards. It just helps to raise the work a little bit off the bench and gives clearance for my fingers. The signatures that I'm going to be sewing will be in front of me there. And the one that I'm actively sewing will be right in front of me. So let's set up some thread. I'm just going to pull off a generous length. I'll do two things to prepare the thread. First, I'm just going to use my thumbnail and my finger put a little bit of pressure on it 
and draw it through. And that helps take some of the wind out of it. It like, comes twisted off of the spool. So then I'll use my little block of beeswax and I'll just pass the thread under my thumb between between my thumb and the wax. The beeswax makes the thread a little bit stiffer. I find it twists a little bit less using the beeswax and it gives it a little bit of lubrication as it passes through the paper. I'm using a number 18 bookbinding needle. I'll just attach the thread. I've got another video that shows you exactly how we do that. I'll begin by going in through the first kettle stitch. Go through the next hole. And I'll just leave enough thread to tie off. first tape in there. that taut. When I pull, I don't pull perpendicular to the paper because that could tear out. I always pull along the line of the spine. My second signature comes in and I go in through the hole directly above where I left off. And again, I'm sewing around the tapes, being careful not to go through them. That would be more important if I was going to round the book, because I would want the tapes to move freely. This being square backed, I don't think it's as, as essential, but it's pretty conventional style. This end I'll just tie off. Trim that to keep it out of the way. come now to the first kettle stitch. The purpose of this stitch is to just link all the signatures together at each end. It's pretty simple. You pass the needle underneath the previous signature, pull the thread around, it creates a small loop, and then the needle comes up through the loop and pulled tight. And we'll do that at the end of each row of stitching from here to the end.
So I'm just coming out through that hole. I'm going to pass the needle under the previous signature on the inside of the previous stitch and push it to the outside. Then I'll just draw it through until a small loop forms. And then my needle is going to come up through that loop and pull taut. When you start on the next signature, your next hole is going to be directly above that. And you go in through there. So I've come to the end of my thread and I need to connect a new one here. For that I'm going to use a weaver's knot. I've got another video that shows how to tie this knot in detail. I'll put a link above. I like to join one thread to the other on the outside of the book. Just a preference. You could just as easily put this knot on the inside. And to finish, I'll do one last kettle stitch and reinforce that with another knot. With the text block all sewn up, the next stage is to make some end papers. The prop from the film also had a video which showed the end papers on the inside, and they appear to be just plain white. So for those I'm going to use this paper. It's about 130 GSM, so I'm going to cut out two end papers that will be double the size of the book. So I'll measure for those and cut those out. So I'm just going to measure in twice the width of the text block. And then I'll take one end paper from each portion of that side of the paper. And so that folded in half We'll produce one end paper and this will be the other. I've come up a little bit short there, but because the book's going to be trimmed down, that should still be all right. Now that we've made our end papers, it's time to attach them. I don't know exactly how the end papers in the actual movie prop were attached, but it's a reasonable guess that they are just tipped on, which means that they're just glued on along the edge to the first and last sections. So we'll go ahead and do that. For glue, I'm using a mix of PVA and methyl cellulose, about one to one ratio. Make sure I've got those in the orientation that I want. And with a piece of scrap paper, I'm just going to guard each one, leaving uh, about three millimeters exposed. I'll just glue those up. Using a methyl cellulose mix with PVA gives me a little bit of extra working time as well, so I don't have to rush too madly. I just line that up with the spine edge of 
the first and last signature. I use my boards to give a little bit of pressure and then I'll just put a weight on that until the glue sets up. That's had a few minutes to set up now. And the last thing I'm going to do before trimming the book is to glue out the spine. I want to make sure it's nice and square. Place it between its boards and then we'll put it in the press. The last thing I want to do before I apply the glue is to come in and close up these sewing holes. I'm just going to use a bone folder and push the paper back into its position. And this will prevent any glue from seeping down inside the text block. It's just a little step that I like to do to prevent any pages from sticking together later. And in this case, I am going to use straight PVA. It's a little bit thicker. And when it dries, it's a flexible adhesive. And in this case, since our book is going to be square backed, I don't need to worry about the tapes being flexible. So I'm going to go ahead and glue right over top of those now. I like to work the adhesive right down into the gaps between the signatures using my finger. I'll let that dry well and then we'll move on to the trimming. I need to work out my final dimensions. For that I'm going to turn back to my scale model printout. So the width is 15 centimeters, but the text block isn't going to be the full width of the book. On the fore edge, we're going to leave, let's say, four millimeters for the square. And at the back, say we'll take four millimeters off of that side too. So that's eight millimeters less, so I'm going to do 142. And the height, I'll take eight millimeters off this 24 centimeters. Again, to leave a square at the top and bottom. So that'll be 232 millimeters. To make sure that I get those measurements right when I cut the book, I'm gonna lay out those lines. I'm gonna come in a centimeter on this side and I'll measure down to 232. Then I'll use a square to draw a layout line. And finally, I'll measure from the spine to the fore edge. So to trim the book, I'm going to use my big paper cutter. It's a good way to get a nice accurate cut. And it has the benefit of being quick. I'm just going to put a piece of scrap gray board underneath to hold the text block up. That looks good. So to support the spine and prevent that from getting crushed, I'm just going to take another small scrap of gray board and put that on top. And this tightens everything down to hold it firm. I can advance the fence at the back to 232 millimeters. And lastly, I'll trim the fore edge. Here I'm being sure to put the tapes between the ribs of the back fence so it holds everything 
against the paper rather than askew against one of the tapes. There we have it, a trimmed text lock. So that'll be all for today. We've got the text block sewn up, glued and trimmed. We've got the covers cut to rough size and rounded. Next time we'll finish those, we'll make the spine and build the case and complete the text block by adding the mull and the bookmark. Until then, thanks for watching. And we'll see you soon.